What's in store for 2020? Find out over the next three days. The way affiliate marketing was a few years ago isn't gonna exist anymore and it's gonna get tougher and tougher. If you wanna do well, you're gonna have to get creative. And I'm gonna show you guys a few ways to get creative. Over 6,000 marketers. The Affiliate Summit really has that opportunity and can stand on that lock, if you will, to really educate the industry around what they need to know to make meaningful change. Over 1,800 affiliates. The future belongs to the companies who are willing to invest in real live, one-to-one, -one, human to human interactions. These are the companies that I don't care if you're on the affiliate side, I don't care if you're on the brand side. If you wanna be able to generate a lot more revenue from the leads and from the traffic that you're already getting, I would encourage you to start talking to your people. Over 800 advertisers. There's no other event where you can connect with the whole industry, meet everyone, get content. If you're in the space, everyone's here, so you might as well be here. The world's greatest marketers take the stage. Welcome to the 50th Affiliate Summit. All right. How's it going, Las Vegas? I don't think my mic's on. Mic check, mic check. Can you guys hear me? Yeah? All right. Uh, so thank you for coming today. Uh, my name is Tim Bird. Um, I want to take a quick moment. I've been coming to these, uh, this convention, specifically Affiliate Summit East and West, for about 10 years now. So I want to thank uh, Missy and Sean and the whole Affiliate Summit team. Uh, you guys have been doing a great job. Uh, keep it up, and thank you for having me. Um, so I'm going to jump right in. Uh, how many people here, obviously you guys are all in the affiliate industry, how many people here do anything with Facebook ads? Wow, pretty much everybody. Cool, okay. Uh, so then all you guys are going to want to pay close attention because I'm going to tell you a bunch of ways to make a, much, a, a bunch of easy money, okay? Uh, so today what I'm doing, though, is we're going over the Facebook algorithm uh, and how you can use it to your advantage, uh, all, all per Facebook's terms, not breaking any laws or anything like that. Um, uh, but if you understand the algorithm, uh, then you don't need to know uh, some hack or something like that uh, that only lasts like uh, you know, a week or two or even a few months. If you understand the underlying technology and how the algorithm actually works, uh, then if something's not going right in your own campaigns or your own business, you can a lot, uh, much more easily fix it. Okay? So we'll just jump right in here. Uh, first, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, in 2004, when I was 18 years old, I became a mortgage broker in downtown Chicago. Um, I'm uh, 33 now. Um, I did that for about a year or so, uh, and uh, I was doing the whole nine to five, going downtown, wearing a suit every day, uh, and uh, I knew there had to be something better there. You know, I keep seeing these ads online, like work from home, work on your laptop, three clicks and make $3,000 a day, right? You guys have seen these ads, yeah? <laughs> I was promised the dream, you know, where's the dream for me? Uh, so, uh, so I started an affiliate program, okay, called CashUniversity.com. Uh, this was uh, whew, back in like 2005, 2006, something like that. Uh, ran that for a couple years. Uh, then uh, uh, basically I had a few other things. I'm doing a, a, a quicker version for you guys here. But um, basically I had a, also a medical marijuana dispensary uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, I had a, a booming affiliate network, okay, you guys know how that goes. Uh, and uh, uh, Visa changed cross sell regulations, LA changed zoning regulations, and simultaneously both of my million dollar businesses went to crap overnight, literally in the same month. Um, so I like this quote here, that failure is only the opportunity to begin again, only this time more wisely. Uh, so I vowed that I would not fall into the, uh, uh, you know, the traps of easy money and build a long-term sustainable business, which I definitely encourage all of you to do. Don't let like some little small government regulation or something like that take you out, you know? Uh, so then uh, after that, I went back to what I knew, right? I started an affiliate network called Plus. Um, if you guys have been in the industry for a long time, you might remember, this was quite a while ago. I did that for about a year or two. Um, we did 10 million in revenue, uh, and after not getting paid by a few advertisers, you guys know how that is too, I'm sure, um, I decided that I wanted to make my own offers. I didn't want to be at the mercy of an affiliate network anymore. Um, so I transitioned to starting an agency, and we did a lead gen uh, for, uh, mostly for attorneys, social security attorneys, uh, mass tort attorneys, uh, but I did all sorts of stuff, you name it. Uh, and it was at this time, uh, when I started those offers, that I actually started running Facebook ads myself, okay? This was about six years ago now. Um, and I started, uh, and I, so I, I Googled online, you know, looking for questions about Facebook ads, right? You guys know Facebook ads is the most complicated platform out there, right? Google being number two. 
Uh, so I'm like Googling these questions about Facebook ads and nothing's coming up. You know, there's a couple of blogs with really outdated information. Uh, so I started a group. Started a group with just my friends that I knew were running ads, okay? Uh, fast forward now six years, it's grown to over 100,000 people in just that group. Um, and I started quite a few other groups. Um, I'm also a community manager, I guess you could call it. Uh, but I really believe in the power of community. Uh, and if you guys can introduce any sort of community aspect to your business, it'll make you a lot more money. Facebook group, something like that, okay? Um, so, uh, I, I, you know, fast forward here, I've been running the group for years, uh, and I'm helping thousands of people, and they're just answering questions all day long. And that was like my side thing, you know? People play video games, I was like answering Facebook ad questions, you know? <laughs> well, that was a terrible hobby, right? <laughs> um, so after, though, uh, after I just started doing a bunch of consulting, uh, and uh, I started, started just getting the same questions over and over. You know, how many ads should my, be in my campaign? How many ad sets? Should I do big audiences, small audiences? How should I bid? Uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, so after doing a bunch of those, I decided to do masterminds where I just got people all together um, so I could teach everybody at once, uh, and uh, I could teach them things that they wouldn't think to ask on a consulting call, right? Um, then, uh, uh, January 1st, 2017, I started Agency Y. Uh, Agency Y is an ad agency where we take only clients to spend $100,000 a month or more, minimum. Um, we have clients like Colgate, Playboy, uh, and a handful of other big e-com ones that you guys may or may not have heard of. All right, uh, near the end of 2017, um, the Facebook Ad Buyers Group, where there were so many posts a day and there were so many gems in there, great case studies, little tutorials, how-tos, you name it, uh, that I decided to make a news site called AdLeaks where you could go and I would turn the best posts in my group into articles on the site so they'd be index indexable by Google, easily searchable, so the people that, like me, had found no help on Google searching for Facebook ad questions uh, could actually find, uh, you know, find some content there. Uh, and then I turned it into a private community uh, where we have over 500 uh, how-tos, tutorials. It's basically like the A to Z of internet marketing. Um, you know, Pinterest ads, Snapchat, Google ads, you name it. Um, so I'm a total geek for this stuff. <laughs> um, ultimately, though, and I, this is the point I like to uh, leave you guys with, is that it's all about the community. I've been trying to bring people together now for, for six or seven years since I started the group. Um, and I throw, I don't know if you guys, any of you guys go to the ad buyer meetup last night? Wow, like three people? Uh, it's a great event. There's like 1,200 people there. So if you guys, I highly recommend you check it out next time. We do all the affiliate shows. Uh, anyway, so let's dive right in, okay? Uh, so Facebook algorithm. I'm gonna, I promise I won't put you guys to sleep, okay? <laughs> it sounds boring, but it's actually pretty cool. So uh, these are all the factors that go into the algorithm, okay? And this is in no particular order, by the way. All right, so the first factor is time, okay? And time means a few things when it comes to Facebook ads, okay? Number one, uh, it's what time you start your ads, okay? Uh, if you want to pace evenly, meaning sped, spread, uh, spend your budget evenly throughout the whole day, then you want to turn your campaigns on at, uh, at midnight, okay? Your account time zone, whatever your account time zone is, okay? Uh, but there's a couple tricks there, right? So we can hack this a little bit. Um, you can actually start your ads partway into the day the first time, okay? And the reason for this uh, is that uh, it's sort of like revving up your engine a little bit, right? If you start your ads four or five hours into the day, what Facebook does is uh, accelerate your delivery, put you higher up in the news feed, okay, to serve your budget faster and catch you up to what you're supposed to, to what you told Facebook you wanted to spend, okay? So when you turn your ads on, you know, four or five a.m., something like that, it gives you like a nice little push brings you higher up in the news feed, and that means you get a higher click-through rate, okay? So it's one little hack where you can get an extra 0.5 or so on your click-through rate just by starting in, uh, a little bit later in the day, okay? Um, and pro tip, you can do this every day also. Uh, we have some clients uh, where we only run their ads, for example, from 5 a.m. to 4 p.m., and that's it. We, we pause it at 4 p.m., New day starts, get it going at five. And this way what it does is just push budget a lot quicker. We find that when we sometimes when we let it run 24 seven, um, if, the, if the first batch of people at midnight account time zone aren't super engaged with your ad, okay, at midnight, right? <laughs> uh, then your ads are gonna do terrible all day. So when you're hitting people, you turn it on at four or five in the morning, you're hitting people right when they wake up in the morning, okay? Typically people are gonna be more engaged than they are at midnight, um, depending on your niches. If you're doing dating, then midnight's a great time, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, the second part about time, okay, is virality, all right? Um, so you can see these two little, uh, little uh, uh, lines here. Um, line, uh, the blue line would be like, uh, let's say that you make the, sa the two same ads, okay? Um, but basically, 
Uh, one of them you spend a lot of money on, okay? The other one, uh, you go slow and steady, kind of wins the race, right? So the blue line would be an ad that you start and you slowly build it up. You start with a low budget, slowly build it up, slowly build it up, and eventually you get a lot of traffic, right? After you spent a t ton of money. Your other option is to just set a high budget in the beginning, okay? Like ad two and just spend a lot of money much faster, okay? Where you, ultimately, you got the same number of visitors, you spent the same amount of money, but much faster, right? Okay? To this, to this the reason for this is that Facebook looks at that as you having a, a higher virality rate, okay? Because that ad got the same number of views, impressions, engagements, etc., in like three days instead of three months, okay? Um, so a little hack here is, uh, you know, don't make your ads today to go live next week or the following week, or something like that, okay? Make your ads the day before you want them to go live, or the same day, okay? Makes actually a pretty big difference. All right, the next two parts of the algorithm I, I kind of highlight together, uh, because they go hand in hand. How many of you guys have he heard of the bully method, by chance? A few of you, oh wow, okay. Got some easy money for you guys here. Um, so this, this is my favorite, uh, w uh, my favorite bidding method on Facebook, okay? How many people do manual bidding here? How about we start that? Okay, handful. For those of you guys that haven't tried it, I'm guessing it's because you don't know exactly what to do there, okay? So hopefully this illuminates this for you. So the bully method uh, is something that I've been doing for about three or four years. Um, I, learned, uh, I, I learned it uh, during Q4, right? We all see costs go up massively in Q4 on every ad platform, right? Uh, and I was not getting any traffic. So I ended up just cranking my bid up, right? I wanted a like $100 CPA or cost per acquisition, right? So I set my bid at like 500 because I wasn't getting any traffic. Um, you know, which is a little scary, right? I don't want to spend $500 a conversion. That would be wildly unprofitable, okay? But then what I learned after my cost actually came in lower, than when I, when I was bidding lower, okay? So yeah, let me, let me repeat that. I put my bid way higher, and then my cost per conversion goes down. What's going on, right? It doesn't make sense. So I started to really think about it, and I realized that what I was doing was actually bullying the competitors, okay? So when they turn their ads on, they're not gonna be profitable today. I might lose a little money for a couple days, okay? But then after two, three days, they're gonna pause their ads because that audience is not profitable for them. Because I'm literally bullying them out of that auction, okay? Everybody has that tolerance. So if you can make it and, not, and lose money for a few days, you can bully people out of your, uh, your, your market, your specific audience uh, demographic. Okay, um, and there's a, it looks like it's not showing properly there, but um, there's, there's a number of reasons this works, okay? When you set your bid really high, what you're telling Facebook is, I'm willing to spend this much, okay? Uh, and what Facebook does on the back end, whether you automatic bid or manual bid, is it's setting, a man, it's setting a physical dollar amount of bid on the back end, okay? Even if you manual bid, let's say 500, it might automatically lower to 200 on the back end. It doesn't even tell you this, okay? That's just how Facebook's pacing algorithm works, but. The reason this does really well is just like when you start your ads, uh, you know, uh, at 5 a.m. or so, like we just went over, um, that gives you a higher ad placement in the news feed because they want to spend your money faster, right? So if no one sees your ad, they can't charge you, right? So they have to put it higher in the news feed to charge you more money faster, right? But when you, uh, when you bid really high, you also get a higher ad placement in the news feed, okay? Because you're bidding really high. When you guys are scrolling through Facebook, what do you think has higher click-through rates? Those first two or three ads that you see, or 20 ads down the feed after you've already passed 20 ads, right? Which one's gonna have a better click-through rate? It's just like Google ads. You guys know Google ads, yeah? First, first spot usually has the best CTR, right? Even if it's not the best ad, okay? Um, uh, so you get higher ad placement in the news feed, okay? Again, so like the hack earlier with the time, you can add usually like a 0.25 to 0.5% uh, on your CTR. This is another way. You get another 0.25, 0.5% on your CTR right here. Together, those two tricks is an, uh, another 1% on your CTR, which is huge. In some cases, that probably is your entire CTR currently. So this could actually drop your cost in half, okay? Uh, so you get a higher CTR from this. What does that typically mean? Lower cost per click, right? We all love that. Uh, which means lower conversion costs, ultimately, right? There we go. Uh, and then but one thing that people don't ever talk about is that it also means better quality users. All right, and let me explain that. The way that Facebook works, okay, it's machine learning, nice and simple. What they do, and this is a very simplified version, all right, but what they do is uh, when you're bidding on conversions or clicks or whatever, we'll use purchases as an example, okay? Say that I own an e-com store or I'm running traffic for an affiliate offer uh, and I want purchases, right? I want people to buy. 
I, I set, I set my, uh, my campaign to optimize for purchases. What Facebook is doing, okay, is they're putting the users that you're bidding on into categories, right? They have all the way over here, this big money bag, okay? These are the people that Facebook has lots of signals on, okay? They're tracking them across many different websites. They see that this person has added products to their cart in a similar niche to your store. Uh, and this person's ready to buy, okay? Maybe they abandoned a checkout a few times, but Facebook knows that given the right, uh, given the right circumstances, this person will buy, okay? That's this group right here. And then Facebook has this group, where they have some signals that they're gonna buy, but they're not as sure. Maybe the person didn't add anything to their cart. Maybe they didn't spend that long on a bunch of other stores, okay? Then we have this one down here where maybe they'll buy, maybe, right? And then this one down here where Facebook has no clue if that person's gonna buy from you or not, okay? And they're just throwing you traffic, all right? When you, when you auto bid, you're gonna typically get these right here, okay? These two lower kind of money bags, all right? When you bid higher, you get these, okay? Uh, the reason this matters is that you're sending these people to your website, okay? Uh, bounce rate, time on page, all this stuff matters, all right? These people in the big money bag there, those are people that spend more money, that purchase more consistently, that, that you have a higher AOV, a higher lifetime value. These are the users that you want, okay? You guys ever run Facebook ads, right, and seek very inconsistent results day to day? Right, yeah, of course. <laughs> Uh, that's typically because you're getting these users over here. So some days you get lucky and you get some good users because Facebook doesn't really know, but most days you don't. Um, and the reason for that, again, is the quality of users. Now also, all these people are hitting your page, right? They're hitting your store, they're going through your funnel, et cetera, and you're making lookalikes based on these people, on the people that visit these pages, on the people that add to cart. Do you want the people that add a lot of stuff to your cart in your lookalike or the people that may or may not check out right over here, right? Um, so the quality of all your, audi your custom audiences, your lookalikes, everything is much better when you bid higher, okay? Uh, the next part of the algorithm would be the history, all right? Um, and I'll keep you guys uh, br brief on this one. I don't want to bore you. Um, but basically, Facebook keeps track of everything, okay? Uh, they keep track of everything on the ad account level, page level, campaign level, ad set, ad, et cetera. Um, and they're looking at stuff like your historic cost per acquisition. Facebook is typically looking at a seven-day window, okay? A seven-day rolling window of the last seven days, and that's what they assume your conversion should cost. So when you pause for a week, sometimes that hurts you. All right, they're looking at CTR, cost per click, quality, uh, what type of users converted, where are those users living, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera, right? Next part would be creative type. All right, so the type of creative. Um, so the algorithm, the, the algorithm is choosing which type of creative to show your users that you're bidding on, okay, based on a lot of factors. One would be ad types they've clicked before. So I'm Tim, right? If I usually click video ads and purchase, guess what Facebook's gonna mostly show me, right? Video ads, makes sense. Um, device they're logged in from currently. Let's say that I usually click video ads, except for when I'm out and on my phone and not on Wi-Fi. Then I usually click image ads, right? Uh, so Facebook is going to do what? Show me more image ads, right? Uh, of course, Wi-Fi or not, and your bandwidth speed. Um, again, if you're on you know, some slow, slow Wi-Fi or something, Facebook's not going to serve you up a 1080p video, OK? Because they know that you won't be able to watch it. Uh, product type also. If they see that uh, you, know, you're, you buy a specific, you know, uh, uh, you, usually you like clothing uh, you know, uh, on a video ad, but then you buy uh, I don't know, stuff on Amazon through carousel ads or something. They're going to do that. They're going to show you those, okay? And then also which creative type users like the users you want have converted on, all right? Uh, and these are the, uh, the most popular uh, ad formats. You have your, uh, on, the, on the left there, your link or image ad, okay? Then obviously a video ad here, uh, and then a carousel or a dynamic product ad, right? And what's, it's, it's very important, and the reason I'm going over this Right, is that the uh, Facebook ad auction, okay, all the inventory that you're bidding on, all right, breaks down roughly like this. And disclaimer, this is a graph I made. This is not based on any official Facebook data. Uh, this is what I see for the most part across all of our clients um, uh, inventory-wise, okay? So video accounts for more than half of the inventory on Facebook. All right, so if you're not doing, how many of you guys aren't doing video ads? Uh, no one wants to raise their hand, I don't believe you. <laughs> uh, if you're not doing video ads, for those of you guys out there, though, you're literally missing out on over half your audience, okay? Your audience says 10 million. Nope, it's only five, okay? Uh, then image and link ads make up about, you know, a fourth. 
Uh, then you've got carousel DPA, mis miscellaneous, like lead forms, and, you know, event responses, stuff like that. But video is making up the biggest portion, okay? You need, you need, you need better video creatives. I highly, highly recommend you invest in that. Um, uh, it can even be just a simple video from your phone. It doesn't have to be wonderful, but it's better than a static image. But you don't only want to run that, okay? And the whole point of this is that you want to hit your audience wherever you can, whenever you can, okay? And even Facebook, um, they just came out with their, uh, their state of advertising um, about a week ago or so. I read through it. Um, and Facebook even themselves recommend that you put multiple creative types all in one ad set, okay? So put your videos in there, your image link ads, carousel ads, and so on, all in one ad set so that Facebook can decide which user and when to serve which ad, okay? If you only have video or you only have image ads, um, you're, just, you're missing out on your users, okay, when they could be purchasing the most. So you have a lot better results simply, uh, simply by having multiple creative types. Right? Uh, next part would be quality, and the quality is a really big one. Facebook, believe it or not, actually really cares about their users, um, and they really could care less about us advertisers, unfortunately. Hopefully that changes one day. Uh, so there's quality scores, though, on the business manager level, ad account level, all of them, right? Just like, the, uh, just like the history. Facebook's looking at the quality, okay? What I mean by quality is stuff like user feedback, all right? Comment sentiment, for example, is one big one, okay? If people are commenting really, really negative stuff on your ads, uh, like, uh, you know, scammer or I hate you guys or bad customer service, stuff like that, right? Facebook's picking out those words, uh, bad, hate, scam, stuff like that. That's a negative connotation, right? Negative comment sentiment, all right? That's going to hurt you. Now, if you can get people to say, I love your brand or, you know, great customer service, positive words, to so try to use positive words in your ads, and typically you can elicit more positive emotions, okay? Obviously, if people hide, market spam, or report your ad, that's not good. <laughs> uh, customer feedback survey. So they've been doing this now for a little over a year. Uh, this is what a customer feedback survey looks like. And so you, if you can go to, to facebook.com slash ad slash customer underscore feedback. Um, and this is mostly applicable to people doing purchases, so e-com and e-com funnels, stuff like that. Uh, but Facebook basically, um, you know, two or three weeks after that someone purchases, they pop up a survey and they ask them, how is this company's customer service? Did you get your product on time? How is the product quality? And so on, okay? Facebook is actually quizzing your customers. And if you don't have a good score, you actually will lose your ad account, okay? Once it gets below a one. Now, if you're above a one, but below a, I want to say two or three, they just changed the default uh, uh, recently. Um, but if, if you're below the average, it actually costs you more for your traffic. You actually pay a penalty to Facebook for not having good customer service and stuff. So it's super important. Um, for Facebook, though, they're looking at a lot of signals, like I mentioned, okay? They're looking at page views per user, all right? So if you have an Ajax page, you're going to want to make sure that, uh, uh, that you do the, have your programmer do the JavaScript properly to send the proper page events to Facebook, so Facebook knows that. Otherwise, you'll be penalized there. But you basically want to keep people on your site as long as you can. To Facebook, that says, hey, your site's engaging, there's good content there, they're not bouncing right away. Um, so they're, but they're also looking at something, uh, page load, for example. Um, page load time about a year ago got even more important. There is an uh, Amazon case study now about seven, eight years ago, quite a while ago now. Um, what they did, though, is they, uh, they found that for every one second above the average or the normal uh, page load time, for every one second of additional page load time, you lose 10% of your conversions. All right? So if you would have got 100 conversions, now you're getting 90 just because your page took one second extra to load. And that study is like seven years old. I haven't seen a recent study on this, but with people's attention, spannings, uh, attention spans declining, I can only imagine that hasn't gotten any better, right? Um, and now, not only do customers hate slow load times, but now Facebook actually also will penalize you for slow load time and uh, charge you more, typically higher CPM. All right? Um, so this is how you measure negative feedback, okay? So this is one of our clients from about a year ago. As a uh, attorney uh, for disability benefits, okay. Um, so this is how I measure negative feedback, okay. Uh, if you look in the very bottom right here, with the, where the red box is, uh, you can see that five people hid the post, five people hid all my posts, uh, three people reported as spam. So you just basically add those all up. That is up to 13, like 13 negative strikes, so to speak, right? Uh, then just divide that by the number of people you reach total. So up here it's 217,000, right there. Divide that out, you get about 
Okay? That seems to be about a normal negative feedback rate. All right? So that's a quick way. And you can find this if you go into your, uh, your page insights and then to a tab called post insights. Um, you can click any one of your posts and it gives you a screen that looks just like this. So you can see those numbers. All right. Uh, this one, <laughs> uh, this one, one of my media buyers put up, and uh, it was during uh, the 2016 election. Um, so this was just a page-like ad, but believe it or not, okay, this one reached almost half the people the other one did. Okay, only 130,000 people. But check this out: 133 people hid the post, 89 hid all the posts, and five people reported a spam. The other one had 13 total negative reactions. This one had 227. With like a half the reach, okay. So this one was a 0.17. All right. You guys all know that uh, when you hit a certain level in chargebacks, you lose your merchant account, right? Everyone pretty much knows that, hopefully. Uh, well, if you hit too high complaints, you lose your ad account. <laughs> My rep called me this day, and he's like, "You better delete your ad right away, uh, or you're going to lose your ad account." This is—he uh, said it was about five to ten times worse than most of their bad ads. <laughs> um, so, okay. So if you have negative feedback, um, or you see that your costs are continually increasing per conversion. You've tried new creatives. You've tried new landing pages. You've tried speeding up your landing pages. Um, and still, nothing seems to be working. Um, typically, it's because you have negative feedback or bad uh, quality scores. Okay? So what do you do to fix it? Right? Uh, and this stuff actually helps you even if you don't have bad feedback, because it just makes it even better. It just helps your, your quality even better. Right? So the first thing I do, step one, is I run page post engagement um, to my ads. Okay? So I set up a new campaign uh, with the, uh, the objective of engagement. All right? And then I put the same ads I'm running in my conversions campaign into the engagement campaign. Okay? What this does uh, is it increases your engagement rate, uh, which will lower your conversion costs, which I'm going to go over in a minute. But, uh, so step two uh, is you want to set up a page likes campaign and just run 10 or 20 bucks a day, nothing crazy, uh, to your page. All right? What this is doing is this is adding new people to your page that haven't complained yet. <laughs> yeah, some of you guys got that one. Uh, so step three, uh, and this one is uh, the silver bullet, I'd say, and this one also helps you pretty much no matter what you're doing, uh, is you set up a, a campaign with the objective of reach. All right? What this is doing is finding people that are most likely to see your ad and do nothing. <laughs> Right? When you run a, uh, you know, a, a campaign for conversions, you're getting people most likely to convert. When you're running a campaign for video views, you're getting people most likely to view your, view your video. Right? Once you take all those out, you take out the people most likely to click in the traffic campaign, you know, all that, you're left with people that will literally see your ad and do nothing. Okay? Uh, so you just run a reach campaign on your ads that are, all, that are just from the conversion campaign. You just dupe them. Duplicate them into the reach campaign, nice and simple. Okay? And what this is doing is for about $3 to $4 CPM in the US, so dirt cheap, for those of you guys that don't know CPM prices, uh, for dirt cheap, you can show your ad to people that are not likely to do anything with it, which means they're not likely to complain. Okay? Um, so what this does is it just lowers that complaint ratio. You don't really get any more of those negative uh, feedback we just went over, but the number of people reached goes up dramatically for very cheap. Okay? So it just it shows a good sign to Facebook. All right? And the next one's engagement. Uh, so, okay, so this I found still works to this day. Uh, it, it is special, it's been working for many years now. Uh, and it especially works, though, if you're, whatever you're running, your niche, uh, either doesn't have great engagement uh, or uh, it doesn't have high engagement. You know, let's say you're selling like toothbrushes or uh, floss or I don't know, something not, not very cool. Uh, you're not going to have a really high engagement rate. People aren't going to be like rushing to comment on your ad about floss or something, right? Uh, so this helps for pretty much everything you run as well. Um, what I typically do is I will ded dedicate 5 to 10% of the overall budget uh, to page post engagement for the first few days. All right? and it's very important that you use, again, your same ads from the conversions campaign uh, in the PPE campaign. Um, and then you basically s uh, taper down the engagement budget. So maybe you start out at 100 bucks a day in engagement, okay? uh, and your conversion cost uh, goes down. You leave it where it is. Uh, conversion cost goes down. Um, so now you're like, okay, I'm getting good engagement. You start lowering your engagement budget slowly, slowly. Eventually, eventually your conversion cost will start to go back up, and you simply put the PPE budget right where, back where it was and leave it alone. I find that typically you want to leave your PPE running at about three percent, two to three percent of your entire budget. So if you're spending $100 a day. Spend three dollars a day on engagement. Okay. If you're spending a thousand dollars a day, spend thirty dollars a day on engagement. Um, that money you spend there 
um, increases the engagement rate dramatically on a page level, on an ad level, on an audience level, on a business manager level, on an ad account level, on all those levels that I just showed you in the history and quality section, all right, it raises your engagement rate, which then means that Facebook will give you the traffic cheaper in the conversion campaign. Okay? So that $30 or so that you're spending on the engagement campaign to keep the engagement rate high for your boring ads <laughs> okay, is going to lower your conversion costs and could save you hundreds of dollars a day, if not thousands of dollars a day, in lower conversions. Okay? Um, again, you need to use the same post IDs uh, and the same ads. Uh, this is what, uh, if you go also to your, pay, uh, your page insights and then post insights, um, you can see this as well. It looks something like this. Um, you can literally see exactly what your engagement rates are for each post on each ad that you have, okay? And they will look something like this. And then you'll be able to say, oh, well, no wonder, no wonder this ad did so much better. It had a 3% engagement rate instead of a 2. It's very easy to see. Facebook gives you a lot of data. If you dig through it, you'll find some really, really good insights. Sometimes I'll go and I'll see why is an ad not, ad not doing well. The engagement is just too low. That's it. It's the only reason. It was a great ad. It was a great landing page. Good audience. Just the engagement rate wasn't good. Okay. Uh, there's a big social proof thresholds too that I found. Uh, likes, comments, and shares. Sorry, the, the sizing's a little off there, but uh, basically, no one cares when your ad is brand new. You have like three likes and no comments. No one wants to be the first one to comment. No one wants to be the first one to like your post, okay? So when you, only, you have less than 10, no one cares. Uh, you, hit, you hit 100, some people might start to care. 1,000, yeah, they start caring a little more. But once you hit 10,000 uh, likes, comments, etc., cetera, um, the social proof will drive your conversion costs down, okay? Uh, uh, same thing with video views, basically. As soon as you hit, and I'll give you an example. You guys see an ad that goes through your news feed, uh, and it has 13,452 views. Uh, are you going to stop and watch it? Eh, probably not, right? But what about if you see a, a video coming through, and it looks like a stupid video you'd never be interested in, but it has 2 million views, or 1.2 million views. Guess what? You're probably going to stop, take 30 seconds or less, and watch that video just to make sure you don't miss something. Okay, so for example, what I'm doing when I'm running a campaign, and let's say I'm uh, you know at 900,000 views on my video, uh, and let's say I'm breaking even, I know that when I get to a million views on my video, that just a, from social proof alone, my conversion costs will go down 10 or 20 percent, uh, putting me at 20 percent ROI. Okay, just from social proof alone. Um, so it makes a huge, huge difference. All right, this next one. People always ask me, uh, you know, uh, do I hide the bad comments? Any of you guys get bad comments on your ads? Three of you? Yeah, right, okay. You guys don't want to raise your hand today. All right, fine, fine, fine. Um, okay, so people always ask, so how do, I, uh, you know, how do I moderate the comments? I you know, run a lot of ads. There's a lot of people commenting, some of them negative, some positive. Like, what do I do, right? Uh, so I like to give the example of a brick and mortar store. You guys all familiar with, like, Walmart, I assume, yes? Yeah? Say yes, come on. There we go. All right. So if you walk into Walmart and you ask the manager, are you a scam, right, which you've seen on your ads a million times, I'm sure, even when you're not a scam, right? Uh, if you walk into Walmart and ask them, are you a scam, Walmart, what are they going to say? Are they going to kick you out of the store? <laughs> are they going to ban you from Walmart because you asked if they're a scam? No, right? Of course not. They're going to say, hey, no, we've been here for however many years. Look at these awards we've won. Hi, I'm Tim Bird. I'm the manager. Uh, you know, uh, we have customer service. We have a return policy. What, what, what can we do to help, you know? <laughs> You're not going to kick them out of your store, which would be like deleting their comment or banning them from your page, okay? Um, so respond to all comments, even the negative ones, okay? And be professional. If someone says, is this, a, is this a scam? Comment why you're not a scam, the good things about you, how they can get a hold of you if they have a questions, okay? Other people are thinking that same thing. So when you just go through and delete and ban and delete and ban people, uh, one, you're deleting your engagement, okay? Your engagement rate literally goes down if you delete enough comments. Uh, and other people are thinking the same thing, okay? So just deleting them doesn't do anything. You're just uh, you're, just kicking, you're just really hurting yourself. Uh, so try to hide them. If you do, if someone, now, okay, so on the, on the flip side, right, if, you, if someone walks into Walmart and starts swearing at you, okay, you're going to kick them out of the store, right? There is a point at which you will kick them out of the store, okay? So when they, when they get to that point on your page, maybe they're swearing at people in the comments or, who knows, spamming you with, like, ridiculous stuff on there. 
then it's okay to hide it, okay? Um, but hide it, don't delete it. Again, if you delete it, you're deleting your engagement and you'll literally see your cost per conversion go up the next day. That simple. All right? Um, so I had this one consulting client. They've been to a few of my masterminds. Uh, and uh, you know, they, I, I did a couple calls with them after, and they said, uh, you know, we've done we've done everything. We've seen great results from everything you taught us. Uh, what else can we do? You know, um, so I'm going through their ad account, looking at their landing page. They're doing multivariate testing. They're doing they uh, have a really fast load time. They're doing really really great ads. Um, uh, and, I'm, I, and I, I stopped by their their Facebook page. Right, you guys need a Facebook page to advertise. Uh, and I, I I scroll through the timeline. I see ad 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 ad. I'm like where's or just regular content, you know? Uh, and they're like, oh, well, we, we, only use this, we only use this for ads. That's what we need the page for, right? It's just for ads. Uh, and, uh, and I was like, you guys never post anything on there? Nope. So I said, okay, just post two to three times a week uh, a meme or something inspirational, motivational, funny, uh, you know, just something your audience will like, okay? Not an ad, all right? Don't put a link to your landing page or anything, all right? This alone, okay, it, 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 this alone decreased their cost per lead by 25 to 30 percent after the first week. Okay, just from posting two to three times a week. How many of you guys don't ever post on your page? Be honest. Come on. Uh, see, I'm guilty of this sometimes too. Okay, uh, but when you do this, you'll find it's like what what legitimate brand doesn't post on their page? It, like only does ads. Could you see Walmart doing that, or Target, or Best Buy, or any of these companies? No, of course not. Right. Also, the problem is when Facebook, let's say they don't really, they, you know, they're, they're a little tough on affiliates, right? We all know this. Facebook's really tough on affiliates, okay? And guess what? When they go to your fan page and look at it, are they going to think you're a legitimate business if you have nothing but ads on your page? Probably not, right? It's, it's another reason you get banned a lot faster. Okay? So just post two to three times a week uh, and boost your post to your audience. Spend like 20 bucks, something on each post. Um, if you're spending even a decent amount of money on Facebook, you'll see your, your conversion costs drop from this as well. Uh, okay, so the next part of the algorithm is competition, obviously, right? Um, any of you guys familiar with Delivery Insights? Anybody check that out before? Handful? Okay. Uh, so Delivery Insights is a really cool tool in Facebook that tells you exactly what's going on with your ad account, okay? It is the crystal ball. So the fact that you guys don't know about it uh, is not good. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll go over it quick, very quickly with you. Basically, uh, how you get there, there's actually like no special really link for it. Um, you have to go on an active ad set um, and hover over the word active, and then there'll be a link that pops up that will say, see Delivery Insights, okay? That's how you get to it. Um, they didn't make it that easy to find, that's for sure. Um, and it only works when you have enough impressions. But uh, what you find in there is a number of things. The, the highlights I'll give you right here. Um, it gives you your auction overlap and your audience overlap, okay? So I'll give you an example. Let's say I'm targeting uh, everyone in the United States 40 plus, all right? That's my demographic for what I'm selling. Um, and let's say that's, I don't know, like 40 million people or something, okay? Um, and then I, I copy that ad set, and I have another ad set that's the same thing, 40 plus everyone in the US, okay? 40 million people, all right? That is 100% audience overlap, right? Exact same audience, okay? Exact same audience. But when I put my ads in there and I turn both these ad sets on, this one might find some customers over here, this one might find some customers over here, okay? I could have zero auction overlap, okay? So auction overlap is what you really need to be careful of. When you start getting auction overlap, meaning you're bidding on the same users, okay, across your different ad sets, that's when you'll see your costs start to go up a little bit, okay? Um, so what you want to do is you want to make sure that you are below a 20% auction overlap. Once you start passing 20% is when your costs start to go up. Hit 25 or 30% and you'll see a noticeable increase in your cost. All right. Um, you can also, what's really cool, and they added this uh, maybe three or four months ago, something like that, um, uh, you can actually see the competition change on each ad set now, which is really, really cool on a, on a daily basis. And it looks like this. You can literally see day by day. Today it was 13% more competitive. Now it's 2% more competitive, 9% more competitive, 11% more competitive. Then guess what? You turn bully method on. Then you get 1% less competitive, 14% less competitive, and so on. Um, you can literally see if the bully method is working right in here. Okay? But this is also very interesting because if you have a few bad days where your cost really goes up and you, want, you have no clue what's going on, look in here. Maybe it just got more competitive. Maybe a big advertiser turned on their, their you know, end, of, end of quarter budgets and that's what happened. Then you don't have to freak out, redo all your ads, like, you know, 
see what, see what, if anything's broken. You just got to look at this. All right. Uh, then the last part of the algorithm uh, is budget. And this is obviously crucial for many reasons. Um, your ad is not going to enter the auction if you don't have any budget remaining, right? Um, and Facebook will deny this. And it's, uh, basically, the algorithm prior prioritizes larger budgets. And Facebook would deny that. Um, and, but they're not, they're not prioritizing it because it's a larger budget and they're going to make more money from you necessarily. It's because you're feeding Facebook more data. Okay? And it makes it easier for Facebook uh, to find the right customer for you when you've already had 50 customers today. Okay? And they can see exactly who those people are from the pixel fires and so on. Okay? When you only feed Facebook, Facebook a little bit of data with small budgets, you only get a few conversions here, a few conversions there. Facebook doesn't know who your users are. They don't know who they're looking for. Okay? So feeding Facebook algorithm more data is money. All right? um, so don't spread your conversions around too much either. Which I'll go over in a minute. Um, all right. Uh, okay, so this is a big one here. Uh, the amount of uh, people always ask how many ads should be in my ad sets. Okay, how many? Uh, and there's uh, I have a basic little chart for this. All right. Uh, so if you if you're getting and you should get no less than 10 conversions a day per ad set. All right. If you're getting less than that, uh, you're not feeding Facebook enough data. All right. And I'll give you an example. Say you turn your campaigns on. All right. You want to be really conservative and only spend 100 bucks a day. Totally get it. Let's say your conversions cost 30 bucks. Right. It's a very normal CPA for a lot of stuff. Uh, 100 bucks a day. You're going to get three conversions a day. Let's say I turn my campaign on today uh, and I get uh, just by chance uh, three conversions in Mississippi. That was just random, right? This is what happened today. Uh, then tomorrow, guess where most of my $100 budget's going? Mississippi, right? I only sh that's the only place that Facebook found customers for me. So they're going to skew more of my budget tomorrow to Mississippi and less to New York and Texas and California and the big states where my customers probably are, okay? And heaven forbid I get a couple more conversions in Mississippi because most of my budget went there tomorrow. Uh, heaven forbid I get more conversions there. Guess where mo mo almost all my budget's going the next day? You know, it's going to Mississippi. So when you don't feed Facebook enough data, you're actually doing yourself like a huge disservice because they're going to be looking in totally the wrong spot for your customers, okay? Uh, so, okay, so uh, conversions daily per ad set. Um, if you're getting at least 10 or 15 conversions a day uh, per ad set, you want to have 8 to 10 total ads, okay, in your ad set. The reason for this, it's like throwing darts at a dartboard, right? You want to hit a bullseye. Uh, if you only have one dart, it's going to be very difficult to hit a bullseye, right? Uh, but if you have four or five or eight darts, it's quite a bit easier, right? Um, but the problem is, you know, then it, it, you know, if that were the case, then why shouldn't I have like 40 ads? Okay. The reason for that is that you're spreading your data around, and it's going to be too thin. Each of your ads can't spend enough. Okay. So it's it's a budget thing. That's why it's based on the number of conversions you're getting. Okay. Um, so you start with eight to ten total ads, and that's including duplicates. Really, really cool hack for you guys. I don't have it on a slide. Okay. How many of you guys duplicate your ads? Okay. Maybe a third of you. Everyone else here is not duplicating their ads. And literally, I mean, you go into your ad set. You might have your two ads or four ads or however many ads you have there. You just highlight them all, click Duplicate, and hit Publish. That's it. Okay? If you do that, uh, you'll see your costs probably go down by 20 to 30% uh, within the first day, maybe two days. Um, like I said, the Facebook is finding different parts of the auction, okay? Um, and you'll, you'll see that your exact ad in the exact ad set on the exact days will perform very differently. One of them could have a 3% CTR and like a $10 cost per conversion, where the other one could have a 1% CTR and a $30 cost per conversion. Same ad, same audience, same day, okay? It's just about that small amount of people Facebook shows it to first, all right? So really fast hack to make more money, just duplicate your ads and hit publish. Literally, that's all you have to do. Okay? F then Facebook will automatically show the one that, that is going to uh, make you more money to, for the most part. Um, so, okay, 10 to 15 conversions. Sorry, I keep getting sidetracked. <laughs> uh, 8 to 10 total ads, that's how many you want to start with. Okay? Uh, and if you're getting 16 to 25 conversions, you want to start with more. As you, as you increase your budget to scale, you need more ads. Okay? You need to spread your budget around to more ads and give, have more darts to throw. All right? Uh, 26 to 50 conversions, you're going to want a little bit more, like 15 to 25 ads. All right, and then 50 plus conversions, you're going to want to want 25 to 35 ads. Okay, just to, to start. All right. So here's what you do. 
let's just use the example of 10 to 15 conversions, all right? Uh, I have, let's just say I have 10 ads in there, all right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to do five unique ads and then duplicate them one time. So I have 10 total, all right? So I have five unique ads, 10 total. I might have like two or three video ads, uh, a, you know, one or two image or link ads, and maybe one DPA, something like that. I'm going to mix multiple creatives in there, just like we went over, OK? I'm going to uh, start my campaign probably at 4 AM so I get that little boost, all right? I'm going to raise the bid really high and bid $500, $1,000, even when my conversion cost is 50, OK? Bid really high, all right? Typically, the conversions come in cheaper, which is like, you, it'll blow your mind the first time you see it. Um, so, okay, so what you do is you start with this many ads, all right? So let's say eight to 10 total ads, including dupes. I've got my 10 ads. After three days, okay, and this, you, you can kind of mold this a little bit to your own liking, but typically after th three days is the recommended amount of time, what you do is you pause the worst ad or two, okay? So I'm down to 10, now I'm down to maybe eight ads, okay? Uh, then I'm going to give it another couple days, all right? Um, let, my, let my other ads run. Hopefully I have at least a couple decent ads go in there, right? Uh, then I'm going to pause my next, you know, uh, my next worst ad or two, okay? So that takes me down uh, from eight ads to seven, now to six ads, all right? Once you hit five ads or half of what you started with, that's the lowest you should go, all right? So if, again, eight to 10 total ads. Once you hit four or five ads that you're running and you've paused the other ones because they're not performing, that's the lowest you want to go. Anything lower than that and you need new ads, okay? You can either duplicate your existing ads or make new ads. Super simple. But you need to have at least a few ads. You never want to get to the point where you have like one ad in your ad set running, okay? Um, the reason for that is let's say your budget's like $500 or $1,000 for that one ad set, which is very, very plausible budget. If Facebook shows that ad to 500 people that weren't very engaged uh, just uh, today for whatever reason, maybe it's a, uh, you know, uh, a celebrity just passed away or, uh, you know, there's uh, brush fires or something, you know, who knows what the reason is. But let's say those 500 people don't respond super engaged to your, your post, um, you're going to blow that $500,000 budget at a really, really bad cost per conversion, terrible in fact. Um, because Facebook doesn't have a choice, you told them you want to spend $500 to $1,000 uh, and you only have one ad in there. Um, you don't have a chance to show the other ads. Um, so you need multiple ads, okay? All right, uh, so that's all I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, if you want any more, uh, feel free to go to my website or Instagram or Facebook, anything like that. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys have as well. Uh, anything Facebook related, Instagram, conversion rate optimization, anything like that. We have a mic or something over there? There's a question over there. Okay. Hey, Tim, I got a question. Yes. I don't know who we're talking. Uh, so you said put the ad sets, um, yeah, sorry, over here. There we go. You said to tell Facebook to kind of use the bully mess method. Um, what if, my question is, what if we say to the ad set we only have $100 a day? Can you speak do up we, a little bit? What if we tell the ad set that we only have $100 a day to spend? Do we still boost it up to 200 and uh, tell Facebook that yes. we want to spend that? Yes, you could, you could uh, let's say your budget is $100 a day on your ad set. You can bid 300 or 400, even though you're not going to spend that much in a day. Um, and it will still have the same benefit. Um, disclaimer though, the bully method does work even better at higher budgets because you're bullying other people out faster. Um, but it will still work typically even with smaller budgets, yes. Good question. Questions, questions? Hey, Tim. Hey, what's up? Hey, how do these um, ad quality score metrics change, if at all, when it comes to dynamic creatives? Ooh, that's a really good question, actually. <laughs> uh, so dynamic creatives are, uh, uh, are tough, honestly. Uh, uh, everybody is seeing a different one. Um, so they, don't really, they're, they can't really rate it on the same scale. You can't really run a page post engagement to the same post ID. Um, uh, so it's, they're still looking, though, at quality. They're still looking at comment sentiment. They're still looking at bounce rate, time on site, uh, how many people hide the ad. Um, that, so a lot of the same stuff still applies. You just can't do like the engagement trick, and uh, but you can still do the bully method trick, for example, um, because you're still you're, it's it's not as much about the creative as it is about the audience that you're that you're uh, you're going for. So ho hopefully that answered your question. <laughs> yes. Hello. Yeah. I have like the two questions. Yeah. Uh, first, uh, we have our apps on Play Store, on Google, and sometimes we monetize these apps through Facebook. 
mm -hmm. and some parts of the bad comments or reviews on, on Google Play Store. So how I can make sure that Facebook doesn't see these bad comments so that Facebook can approve uh, my, uh, say, campaign? Where are the comments, the bad ones? On, the, on Google Play Store, for example. On, on the Google's, I can't Play hear Store. On Google Play Store. On, OK. Like on the page? Yes, on Google Play Store. And I'm promoting an app on Facebook. And let's assume there are like bad reviews on the Google Play Store. You're saying on the Google Facebook. I'm not really. Oh, the Le Play Store. Sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> um, I actually i am not that familiar with the Play Store, to be honest with you. Um, so I don't really know how to, how to manipulate that, to be real honest. OK, second question. Like, we have like, the difficulty by, with Facebook in approving our ads. Yeah. Uh, especially when we are using like, deep links or adjust mm -hmm. tracking. So what's your recommendations about this? Uh, so that, that's a good question, okay? So Facebook has three account standings. Uh, they have uh, green, yellow, and red. Nice and simple, okay? Green means you're going to typically get your ads approved very quickly. Um, uh, you're not going to go through a lot of manual reviews and so on, all right? Uh, you get into yellow after you get a bunch of disapproved ads, maybe a failed payment, uh, too high of a complaint ratio, this sort of thing, okay? Um, uh, and once you're in the yellow, you're going to go through a lot of more manual reviews. You're going to have a lot more ad disapprovals, stuff like that, okay? If you have a rep, you can actually talk to them and ask them to do a manual review, and they can manually flip you back into the green, okay? Which will make it so you have a much faster ad approvals, okay? And a lot of less problems. Um, uh, if you don't have a rep, one good hack uh, is to um, upload like 500 or 1,000 ads that are very, very vanilla and clean, like, uh, not aggressive at all, super, super overly mega compliant, okay? Uh, upload like a thousand of them, all right? Uh, and they will all get approved, obviously. Uh, and then this lowers your disapproval ratio. Um, once you have a high approval ratio, you can put, it can kick you back into green, um, and you'll get cheaper, uh, typically cheaper traffic, uh, uh, conversion-wise. Uh, and uh, your ads get approved way faster. You don't, have a lot, you, you don't get flagged a lot more. So um, yeah, just basically put a bunch of ads through or talk to your rep. I've got a question. I've got a question about uh, duplicating a CBO. So okay. if I've got a CBO that's just crushing it right now. Okay. Do I duplicate? Or How many ad sets? Uh, two ad sets. Uh, what's the budget? Like twenty-three hundred dollars a day on one, about a thousand dollars a day on the other. Okay. Uh, is it a big audience, like broad? I'm assuming. Yeah, all broad. Uh, if it's, if the audience is bigger than twenty million, um, you could safely dupe it again. Uh, but what I would recommend is that you actually put more ad sets into the CBO. Um, for those of you guys that don't know, it's campaign budget optimization. Um, but I'd recommend you do like uh, five or six ad sets, okay, all broad. Um, and then you, what you can do is, uh, and even if you want to get even more advanced with it, um, what I recommend is uh, what I call the, my slider method, where you basically uh, manual bid all different amounts on each ad set in the CBO. So you might have like five broad, uh, you know, this exact same audience duplicated five times in there, right? Five ad sets. Maybe you bid like $50 a, a conversion on that ad set, then 75 on this one, 100 on this one, 150 on this one, 200 on this one. Um, and you're going to hit different segments and pockets of the audience. Um, and then you'll find a few, you know, three or four of those out of the five or six um, will just much outperform the other ones dramatically. Um, and this also lowers the, uh, uh, the auction overlap, too. So okay, basically, more ad sets, and you increase the budget, and you can duplicate it again. And if you want to go crazy, manual bid, too. OK, I'm going to message you to consult with me, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tim, yeah. yeah. Um, so on your previous slide about um, conversions um, equal to number of ads, ad yes. copies where you're duping. So on some of mine, I'm running dynamic creative, and I don't have specific ads. Yep. Do you recommend to not do or put dynamic creative in, essentially, it's, because you can't no, test dynamic it. creatives are great, and I totally understand. Okay. Um, you want to stick to like the same, uh, a similar number. So right, I had like eight to 10 total ads there was what I put on the slide for 10 conversions. You'd want to have maybe 10 or so total variations. Uh, so maybe that's uh, you know, four ad copies and two headlines. Uh, and you can go a little bit more than that. Um, uh, basically, the higher the budget is, the more, uh, the more variations you can do. But you don't want to go, like, let's say the budget, you're only going to get 10 conversions. You can't do, like, 
five bodies and five headlines and five videos and five, you know, shop now, you know, different buttons, call to action buttons. Uh, you're going to end up with like a hundred or more variations, and then the data gets spread way too thin, and Facebook can never find a good winner. Um, so there is like a comfortable medium. So yeah, you want to be maybe around 10 to 15 max. Are, uh, there. And through yeah. Dynamic, are you able to see the stats based on all the combinations? Is there uh, a way to see that yes reporting? Yes, you are, but only for certain event types. Like, you, you can for purchases, uh, but you can't for a start trial, another one of the events. Um, so uh, most, like, uh, I, th I don't think you, I think you can with lead. There's like a few that you can't, but most of them you can, yes. There's, um, there's time for just one more, I think. Cool. Go over here. Hi, Tim. Uh, first of all, thank you. This was awesome. Um, it's a simple question when talking about engagement. So mm -hmm. I sell um, like a nutrition app, and we use women who are muscular and possibly, you know, things are showing. Um, <laughs> yeah. So anyways, we get negative comments like, oh, she looks like a man. And <laughs> does Facebook know? Like, we delete those, which maybe we need to stop. Yes, but don't delete those, yeah. Okay, so do they know that that's not negative towards the product, or is that considered like a negative comment? Well, see, like she looks like a man. Um, that specific sentence uh, wouldn't be really. That would be rated as neutral. Okay. Like there's no negative or positive word in there, really. And so if there's like a ton of engagement, which there generally will. Yeah, be, like people are like arguing all. in the comments. Yeah. It's generally a good thing. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thank yeah, yeah. You. Don't delete them. Hide it only. Okay. I actually think one final one then over here, and then we have okay. to end. Um, so we specialize in running Facebook retargeting ads for industries which are maybe not particularly Facebook approved, uh, such as <laughs> CBD and supplements and other things like okay. that. Um, we do so by directing those ads to a landing page or article uh, within a third party yeah. website, uh, which you know has a, a strong domain and things like that, already <laughs> yeah. has built up some authority within the industry. Um, and the performance model that we work off of is essentially that we don't necessarily get paid until the ads are profitable uh, and we, we make a percentage of revenue. Okay. Um, so part of what we struggle with uh, when coming to an agreement with clients and things like that is the actual attribution window. Mm. Um, so <laughs> the model that we've, we've tried to run off yeah. of is a 28-day click, uh, seven-day view. Okay. Um, but we've had a lot of pushback on that on clients bet, who might yeah. want, you know, <laughs> seven day click and one day view uh -huh. or, or different variations of such. Uh, what would you say is like the standard attribution window and how would you necessarily justify that to somebody that you're that, trying to pitch Yeah, that, on the that's actually a model? really, really great question. And I could talk about attribution for like hours, honestly. Um, it's like one of the most uh, debated topics, I'd say, across all of internet marketing. Um, it really depends. Are they running also like Google ads or some sort of other traffic too? Yeah. So, I mean, w we have a lot of different models. We can run cold traffic on Google. We can run retargeting display, retargeting Facebook, cold traffic Facebook. Um, we offer obviously email, dedicated email, different things like that. Um, but it's kind of a comprehensive picture and we actually got our start by running full service marketing for CBD companies and kind of realized that this was an opportunity that presented itself and, and kind of ran with it from there. Um, but like I said, that's, that's been the number one issue that we've run into is justifying that attribution window. And obviously, brands that we work with are concerned with double dipping with affiliates and, yep. and other partners who are also getting a piece of those conversions. Yeah, so I totally just understand. kind of interested to see what you would consider uh, the standard window and, and how to pitch that. So I guess to try to answer your question simply, like I would normally try to go with a 28-day click, one-day view, which is Facebook's default. Um, but when you have other traffic sources like affiliate traffic or uh, Google brand keywords, stuff like that, that where Google is going to take credit for it and Facebook take credit for it, um, that's where you need to get like multi-attribution software in, uh, involved. I at the very least, Google Analytics, um, uh, and then set it so that you can change the attribution so it's first click or last click or uh, it's shared attribution where it gets like half a conversion for the first click and half a conversion for the second click, stuff like that. Um, so that's where you need to really look and find like see. Uh, where most of the traffic's coming from originally. So usually track that with like UTM parameters, stuff like that. 
Um, but it, I mean, there's no easy answer to that. I mean, it's right, right. whatever you can convince the client is fair based on all the other traffic coming in. It's, it's, that's a really hard one, you know? Yeah, no, I, I totally yeah. understand. <laughs> and, and obviously that's something we've struggled with with yeah. every single client we've worked yeah, with. Yeah, so. I, I, we, we deal with the same thing with every client we have. Um, it's a lot easier when we can control all the traffic, but if they're running their own Google ads or something, um, you know, we'll be running uh, top of funnel Facebook traffic, stuff like that, but then people are going and Googling it, uh, clicking their brand keyword, buying there, I get the view attribution, they get the click attribution on Google, and it's a whole mess, you know? Um, so it is typically easier when you can control all of it, but yeah, there's unfortunately like no easy answer for that one. That's the end of our questions. Thank you so much, Tim. Let's thank give him another you. round of applause. Reach out to him through social if you've got more questions. Thanks, guys.